Forged in flame, I craft these weapons for you. To slaughter your enemies, to make them bow before you. To enchant them with power for your foes to fear. To concoct some potions that you may consume to presume. To make you armor to sustain your battle damage. And fishy sticks, cause it's a fun and tasty snack. Welcome everyone today to a video to teach you all the best tips in order to maximize your crafting experience, helping you become the best crafter you possibly can, and how to place your skills down specifically in the most important ways. A bit of an account to it, what does that mean? And you're not actually explaining to the audience how to specifically craft in every distinct area of expertise, are you? No, heck no you Aldermary piece of scum garbage. Those are videos for another time. This is to prepare people for becoming those specific crafters. Step one, subscribe to ESO Plus. Not only will having ESO Plus give you a bragging title to all your friends, I pay for ESO Plus, everyone. Oh my goodness. I have now met the richest man alive. It gives you access to the crafty bag, which allows you to carry an unlimited amount of all the crafting resources forever. All the crafting materials you pick up, the stuff you deconstruct, and the bait for fishing is all stored within the crafting bag. On top of this, you will receive a 10% speed boost on research time and 10% more experience from deconstructing equipment and glyphs. Step two, loot everything. Yes, basic, but literally what you need to do. Picking up all the crafting materials you see will just continue to stack up in your bag. Grabbing butterflies and insects is also important as well, as they will occasionally continue and poison making materials. Also, don't focus on just resources out in the wild. Loot barrels, dressers, nightstands, and all those kinds of containers. Dwemer containers are also important to check because they have the chance to contain Dwemer crafting motives. Lots of backpacks and furniture will also have a motive drop chance as well. Looting everything may take a while, which means that you're gonna want to focus on step three, which is rapid maneuvers. Once you finally hit level 10 and arrive in Cyrodiil, finally, I will become a level 10 PvP master. And you've completed the intro quest, you'll level up to level 2 in the Alliance War skill line, which contains a skill called Rapid Maneuver, also known as Extreme Xanax Skills. You can now rush from material to material without having to worry about slowing down. Step 4, get on the material searching nerd glass and acquire the Keen Eye skill. This skill puts a beacon on every single crafting resource found out in the wild, essentially helping speed up things even more. Alchemy mats can be difficult to find, especially the good ones like Columbine, so putting 3 in alchemy would be smart, and at least 1 into the rest. Although you might think you are a master looker, I, I can see! I can! Collect resources. It wouldn't hurt to throw some skill points into Keen Eyes if you have a few to spare. Which brings us to our next step, Step 5, Skill Points. Get out into that world and gather up as many skill points as you can. Doing the main quest line is one of the best ways to get lots of skill points. You're also going to want to hunt down Sky Shards for skill points, in which I'd recommend the add-on Sky Shards, which will mark them all on the map for you. Trust me, you're going to need a lot of skill points when becoming a Master Crafter. At the minimum, you're going to need at least 95 skill skill points to put all of the crafting skills on one character. This includes the passive for research times, which you can recover when you become a 9 trait crafter and everything. If you get all of the passives, you're gonna need 140 skill points. The minimum skills to have when becoming a master crafter are as follows. In all of the equipment skill lines, put 9 points into level, 3 into extraction, 4 into research, and 3 into improvement. Also, throw 3 into hirelings as they are a great way to get free materials every day, even some gold improvement materials at times. In enchanting, put 9 points into potency and 4 into aspect. Because not many colored runes drop, you can get by without extraction, but still throw 3 points into hireling to potentially get those kudas. Finally, in provisioning, put 3 points into quality, 5 into improvement, 3 into chef, and 3 into brewer, as well as the 3 into hireling. Work those slave peasants! <laughs> I mean, hirelings. Step 6. Because of the amount of skills required to create a crafter, you may want to split it between two different tunes instead of just one, but do not split up your equipment crafting. Keep all of your armors and weapons on one crafter and everything else on another. Reason being, getting all of the motifs on one character is much smarter than getting them all on two separate characters. Step 6. 7. Always research. Oh my goodness, I cannot stress this one enough. Researching is the most important thing to jump on right away. The 8th and 9th traits in each section, assuming you've got the skill points to speed up research, will take up to 2 months to research. Researching every single trait for a single piece of equipment takes 86 days. So remember to have that beautiful triple skill to get more than one thing researching at a time. Plus, clothing is combined with medium and light armor, so get researching on that right away. For Eglin didn't start researching, look where he is now. You're an uneducated example, Franklin. Step 8. On the 
topic of researching, seek help from a master crafter. Honestly, most master crafters will not mind you asking for a researchable piece of armor or weapon from them. Obtain those items a few days before the research slot opens so that you actually have the instant you can research them. Second, actually provide materials for the research. Send over all of the crafting resources as well as the trade items such as sapphires for divines just to help out your crafter in making your gear. Finally, tip your crafter. Honestly, it goes a long way to send a couple hundred gold for the work they do for you. And here you are, Master Crafter. For all of the items you've crafted me in the Nernhone trait, a shiny piece of gold. Step 9. Research the important traits first. The more important ones to research would include divines and infused for armor, and sharpened and precise for weapons. Seeking guidance on master crafters' top crafted items for builds would be smart just to look at what traits they actually use for the most popular builds. Step 10. Deconstruct. Honestly, just break it down. Not dance, I mean that'll come later, but literally deconstruct all of the useless basic items or the items that just don't benefit you and fill up your inventory space should be deconstructed for its resources, and it will also level you up in the process, especially for the higher level and better equipment. Step 11, level up a little bit of crafting on each character, not with the intent on actually making them a crafter, rather to acquire the hireling skill on every character you have, maximizing the amount of resources you get every single day from hirelings. Alright, log in, give me, log out. Log in, give me, log out. Log in, give me. And well, there goes all my playtime for today. Step 12, you know that board that you pass by literally every single day with an arrow above it that you usually couldn't care less about? Yeah, well you better start caring. Doing those daily crafting rids will advance you in crafting, gain you 600 gold at the maximum crafting level gives you crafting materials, recipes for provisioning, and sometimes a chance to get survey maps, which are like treasure maps for resources and food. Alright, according to the map it should be right here, and there it is, a wild pot of freshly cooked carrot soup! Hey, that's mine! Don't touch that! If you've got a survey map, those resources at the location are yours, no one else can swoop them up from underneath you. Step 13, do the provisioning and alchemy rits on as many characters as you can. These rits are a little bit different, rather than actually having to be experienced in crafting stuff, you just need to have the food slash drinks and potions in your inventory. You can literally grab the writ and immediately turn it in. Let the provisioning writ speed challenge start now! Done! Dang it, how does he do that? The provisioning writ has you making one of three different food and drink items per day, so just stack up on plenty of those items and hand them in when you need to. For potions, the rotation is health, stamina, and magicka, or ravage health, stamage, and magicka, which usually isn't the case, but you can just skip those days if you want. These items must be self-crafted actually to hand them in, no just picking them up. Step 14, make sure you do provisioning writs at different levels. For example, if you've got improvement level 1, you're gonna get level 1 recipes, but if you're at improvement 6, well, you're gonna get level 6 recipes. You can literally tailor the rewards you gain for different characters so that you can get recipes of each level. This allows you to add many new recipes to your cookbook and the chance to get lower level tri-stat food and drink recipes, which can be sold for a lot of gold at a guild store. And voila, your food is complete! You expect me to pay 50,000 gold for a steak? It is steak in bowl. I'll take a hundred, please. Step 15, keep some of your equipment levels at nine. Yes, I know that you want to make the max level materials, but on some of your characters, keeping them on nine will allow them up to those level nine materials. Being a level 10 crafter will give you Rothgar area survey maps, whereas if you're level nine, you'll be in Craglorn, which everyone knows has a higher Nerncrux drop rate. So getting Craglorn area survey maps gives you a higher chance of getting some of that Nerncrux goodness. Step 16, grab the Dol Gubens Lazy Crafter add-on. Basically, this add-on will instantly create all of the items that you need for the writs as soon as you get into a crafting station. It's as easy as that. Alright, let the actual writ crafting speed challenge begin! Done! Oh, come on! Step 17. Do dungeons, dolmens, dailies, and bosses. Some of the much more rare motives can be acquired through doing these different in-game events. Undaunted pledges, Rothgar daily bosses and delves, Rothgar public dungeons, bosses and dungeons in Hughes Bane, and finally treasure chests in Cyrodiil all have a chance to give you some of the more expensive and exotic motives. Finally, I've completed this entire rare motif set. How do I look? Like a big nerd. Yes, the big nerd motif set works! Step 18, who knew champion points would come into this? Well, configuring your champion points can actually greatly help you out with crafting. The Inspiration Boost passive is unlocked with 30 points in the tower tree and gives you a 20% XP boost when deconstructing items. The Plentiful Harvest gives you a 10% chance to get twice the number of mats from collecting any resource and is unlocked with 10 points under the Lover Tree. 
And finally, the Master Gatherer passive is unlocked with 75 points under the Lover Tree and cuts the resource collecting time, adding to the speed of the Sanic collecting skills. Step 19, hoard your improvement materials. As you begin refining raw equipment, deconstructing colored equipment, and as a bonus, I'm gonna craft it all purple for you. No, I believe that green is a cool color. Huh, I don't know, I don't think you understand. You see, craft it green, you freaking piece of trash. You're gonna start getting a ton of improvement materials. Green, blue, purple, and then finally gold, which is extremely expensive and rare. Green and blue are pretty casual, and as a crafter, feel free to just throw green and blue on the armor you craft for people. But once you get to purple, definitely raise the price a little bit, and if people ask for gold, do not do it. The gold improvement material is literally worth at least 5,000 gold a piece, and you need 8 in order to craft 1 piece of armor with it. A full set of armor requires 56 pieces of improvement materials, so hoard them, because you're gonna need a lot of materials to improve your armor. Step 20, get those Rothgar provisioning quests finished. Yes, I know that you you have to look at a filthy garbage looking orc right in the eye for a couple seconds, but believe me when I tell you that these quests are definitely a great idea for those wanting to get some insanely good recipes right off the bat. Because this is auto scaling food, this allows you to use the same food, which is good food as well, all the way from level 1 to 50. The first three quest recipes are okay, giving health boost and recovery to either one of the three attributes, but the fourth quest gives you our Zorga's Smoked Bear Haunch, which gives you a boost to health and try recovery, giving you a boost to each of the three attributes all in one. This is a very popular piece of food for PvP players to use who will actively seek to purchase it on the guild store. And now for step 21, the final step that will allow you to craft all gold armor for less than 5,000 gold. That will give you a piece of food that lasts for 5 hours and gives you unlimited stamina, magicka, and health. And that step is...